Hello there. Today I have a fun little project to make. Today we're going to make something called a shrink pot. What in the world is a shrink pot, you might ask? Well, it's a little container made from a branch of a tree. Now, does that mean we're going to go get a fresh branch off a tree today? No, not really. A couple weeks ago, I was walking in our local woodlands and I saw a couple of beech trees that had recently fallen. These were living trees when they fell, so the wood was essentially still preserved. So that was a great opportunity to harvest some shrink pot raw material. I brought that back home and I put it in my own permanent storage. Where is that, you might ask? Let's go see where we store green wood and keep it fresh. So this was my permanent storage solution for green wood or fresh wood harvested that needs to remain fresh until I get a chance to work with it. I bought this chest freezer specifically for storing my wood. As it turns out though, there's a little bit more than just wood in this freezer. My wife seems to think we need to store food in there too. <laughs> That's okay, there's enough room for everything in here. So let's fish out the uh, shrink pot material. I wrap it in plastic. And here we are, nice piece of beech branch, fresh off the tree and ready for making into shrink pots. So the wood has been sitting out now for a couple of hours and I'm ready for the next stage. I cut the wood in half, so I have two pieces sitting here now. What I want to do is I want to auger a nice big pilot hole in this branch here because my ultimate goal was to hollow out the whole thing. I can't do it all with an auger, but I can do a lot of it with the auger. What I'm going to use is an antique auger that I bought at an antique store. You can pick these up for a pretty good price these days. Now, the antique auger oftentimes has little wings on the edge of the blade right here. Little wings that slice the wood as the auger is penetrating the wood. It helps make for a really clean cut, especially when you're augering face grain. But we are going to be augering end grain today. So as we auger the end grain, those little slicing uh, wings that are on the auger here, it's not good to have them. So what I did was I filed them off. I got rid of them and I altered this auger so that it works just right for augering out shrink pot pilot holes. <laughs> I want to get set up on the end vise right here. I want to show you a neat little jig that I made to help me accomplish holding this in my end vise. So I want to clamp this piece of branch on this side of the vise. Open the vise. I try to keep the piece of wood parallel to the floor. Now as I tighten the vise, watch what happens on the other end. The wood is now touching both sides of the vise, but as I clamp the vise down further, this side of the vise is moving forward. In other words, this whole thing is twisting or racking. I want to prevent that. I don't want that to happen, so I built a little jig to help me with this. Here's the jig right here. Just a couple pieces of wood put together with a threaded screw rod and I have a bunch of uh, little pieces here which I can swivel up or down. So the way this works is I put it right into that hole right there. The next thing I do is I come over here and start the wood, start to clamp this wood. Now as soon as I feel the vise start to grab onto the wood here. I'm going to pull the wood out and I'm going to keep the vise right there. I'm going to situate this right here. So what I have in effect here is a spacer that is the same size as my piece of wood that I'm going to use on this side. Now I can clamp down on this vise pretty hard and everything is going to stay nice and tight. Okay, now I'm ready to begin augering. I have a little punch here. I'm going to give myself a little hold to begin. Okay. It's pretty easy to get started. Again, this is fresh green wood from a living tree. 
soft and full of water. The auger makes a wonderful noise. Now what I like to do is, as I'm augering here, I want to sight down the auger and make sure that I'm augering straight into the piece of wood that I have right here. So. Okay, that's about parallel to the floor. <laughs> I just want to go to the end. I don't want to go completely through. And actually right now, I see the end of the screw popping through. So I am done. There we have it. Now what I'm going to do with this piece of wood is cut myself a few lengths for shrink pots. The shrink pot is not going to be quite this long. The shrink pot I used as an example earlier is only a couple inches, a few inches long. And that's the size that I want to make out of this. So I'll probably get two nice shrink pot blanks out of this piece of wood. So what I'm going to do with this blank right here is cut it down into two lengths. I'm going to mount it back in the vise and use a handsaw to cut it down. one. This one will be a little taller. There we are. Now I have two shrink pot blanks ready to go. Now it's time for the next step. I'm going to be using a Sloyd knife to carve this shrink pot. Sloyd knife is ideal because it's long and thin and very sharp. Ideal for carving green wood such as this. I'm also wearing a Kevlar glove, not because I'm afraid of cutting myself. Really, it's to help me uh, hold the shrink pot tight. The way I like to use the Sloyd knife <clears throat> is to insert it into the shrink pot with a slicing motion. This is going to be a long process. I'm making progress. It is green wood. It is fresh. Green wood cuts very easily. I flip the shrink pot occasionally to work both ends equally, mindful of trying to work a little bit of the middle as well. I don't want to end up with a hump of wood only in the middle. I also need to keep track of my uh, thickness here. I don't want to get too thin. That's actually about the proper thickness for this shrink pot right here. So I'll get it down to about that thickness right there and then we'll move inside. There's another step that I'm going to do to finish the inside. Okay, I have a pretty good thickness of the walls now. I wanna take it inside because I have another jig that's gonna help me really get these walls to uniform thickness with a nice smooth cut. Okay, we're not quite done yet. I wanna thin these walls out. Take a look at the finished pot here. And I want them to be even throughout. Right now, there's a little bit more thickness in the middle of the pot. I want them to be parallel walls. So this is the jig that I'm going to use to hold the shrink pot stable 
while I carve the inside of it, while I make the walls parallel from one side to the other. I want a nice, even, thin thickness throughout. Don't quite have that here yet on this one. I have a nifty little tool here, a crook neck gouge. It's going to provide a nice inside curved cut on the shrink pot. In the beginning, I use a mallet to help me get away some of the waste wood from the inside of the shrink pot. Once I've used the mallet to get a lot of the waste wood out of the center, the center thickness, now I use the crook neck gouge by hand to finish it off with some nice finishing cuts. It'll still take a little while to do that. I have to bring down the thickness a little bit. But now that I have the bulk of the wood removed from the inside, working this will go a little bit easier with the crook neck gouge. The nice thing about when you get the inside of this pot shaved with the gouge is that it's smooth throughout. Now the cuts are going very easily. Um, and keep in mind that we're cutting with the grain, which is really nice. So cutting with the grain and uh, just working it down to a uniform thickness throughout. I'm almost there. A few more uh, minutes, hopefully, and I'll be finished with this stage of the shrink pot. I'd say the bottom of this thing is about finished. I have a very even thickness throughout, all the way around. Eh, one spot, maybe a little bit high. Nice. Now the bottom is finished. The top, I got a little thin on the, some of the edges on the top. That's fine. I don't need the thickness there, but I do need a little bit more thickness on the bottom. So I got a nice thickness around the bottom. The inside looks pretty good. The walls are fairly parallel. So I think I'm about finished. Now I want to do one more step before I move on. I want to take the bark off. Why do I want to do that? Looks kind of cool with the bark on. I left the bark on this one. This was tulip tree, by the way, and this one is beech. What I found with beech is that as it dries, the bark tends to separate. It may not fall off completely, but you'll see gaps around the edges. So I like to take the bark off at this point. I'm going to use a straight chisel. Removing the bark is straightforward. Be careful not to gouge into the wood. We just want to take the bark off, but not any wood. We need that thickness that we have. There's a couple tricky areas. There's a knot right there. That was actually tricky working in the, in the inside of the shrink pot presented a little bit of a problem on the inside. Nothing couldn't resolve, just the grain gets real crazy around a knot. The thing about these shrink pots is that the grain is usually so straight, it's very easy to cut. But when you have a knot on the inside, it makes it a bit harder. You'll know when you pop through the bark all the way because the sound changes. You have kind of a crunchy sound there. When you get through the bark, it gets very quiet.
Take the bark off in stages. You don't want to accidentally gouge into it and make it too thin. Just finishing up the bark removal. A little bit more to go. Okay, now we have a pretty uniform thickness throughout. We have smooth sides. We have smooth sides on the inside, smooth sides on the outside. It's time to do the final step. Well, what am I going to do now? I have here a hollow tube, but I need a bottom. And I looked in the shop and I found this piece of butternut here, and I think this will make a good bottom. The only problem is it's a little bit thick. So, need to rip it down. That's far enough. I don't want to risk cutting into my bench. The next thing I do is draw the diameter of the inside of the pot on my piece of butternut. There's the inside. Now I've marked the inside diameter of the shrink pot on my piece of butternut. I put an arrow here, and that corresponds to a line here. So I know when I'm going to put these together, I will line those two up. Now I have to cut this off and cut that out. Okay, here we have something interesting. This is a scroll saw from the early 1900s. This was manufactured more as a toy, not really a professional tool. Uh, but it'll work just fine to do what I needed to do, and that is cut out the bottom for my shrink pot. Okay, well, that was very fun. I was able to cut out my little circle for my shrink pot. Next stage, we have to taper the edges for this and we have to cut a groove in our shrink pot. Now that I have my bottom cut, I'm ready to cut a groove into the bottom of the cylinder. To do that, I use a Lee Nielsen cutting tool. I think this was made originally for cutting inlay, uh, veneer perhaps. I'm going to use it to cut a groove in the bottom of my shrink pot. So here's the cutting gauge. Simply slide it in. Okay, I have one slice in the bottom of the pot. Now that I have the slice in the bottom here from the cutting gauge, I need to turn that into a groove, and to do that, I'm going to use my old Swiss Army knife and I'm going to simply cut a groove right here. It's careful work. Go slow. Don't press too hard, but hard enough to cut the wood. And you can see it's starting to get the waste out of that groove. Okay, I have a nice groove going there. It's probably about ready for the bottom.
Okay, so the question that we do not know the answer is how much is this pot going to shrink? In other words, I've cut the bottom so that it'll almost fit inside the pot. I need to trim it up a little bit, smooth it out. But once we get the bottom in there, what kind of diameter is this pot going to lose? That's what we don't know the answer to. At any rate, we're going to do our best. The best thing to do is to fit this in as perfectly as possible, taper the edges on the bottom side, so that way when you look in the pot you'll see a very flat bottom and square edges along the edge of the groove there. If this doesn't make sense, then hang on tight. Let's finish the bottom off. So, I just need to finish tapering this bottom. The best way I found to do this one is put my 120 sandpaper down and just sand it right to the line. I need to be careful not to reduce the diameter of this because I've already cut it to almost the exact diameter of the shrink pot body. What I do need to do though is taper this down almost to a knife edge along this side here. Sometimes you just have to come up with ways to hold your work. It may not be conventional. But this little bottom is cut to fit, so I have to be very careful about how much wood I take off of the bottom. I want it to fit into the groove, but I don't want it to be loose when it dries, because it will be loose in the beginning. Okay, I have a knife edge all the way around. Now what I need to do is try to fit this in I need to get that to pop down in there, but I want it to be as tight as I can get it because otherwise it'll fall out of this groove. Line up my arrow with my little mark. It's close. There it is. It fits. Now it's loose because it just barely fits into there. In a little while, this pot will shrink. Well, it's going to take a few days. This was a process. It took a long afternoon to do this. 
but I have the bottom fitting just perfectly in here. What I'm going to do now is, believe it or not, I'm going to put this in my car under the back window where it's going to get really hot. That is what's going to cause this pot to shrink. It'll shrink over time, but I can do it really fast in my car. So I'll get back to this in a couple of days and we'll see the end result. It's been a couple of weeks since I set the shrink pot aside to let it dry and thereby shrink around the bottom and lock the bottom into place. That is the whole point of a shrink pot after all, right? So now it's just a matter of cleaning it up and finishing it up. So let's get to the finishing stages for this shrink pot. This morning I've been working on shaving down the outside of the shrink pot, taking some nice long strokes down the outside to expose the fresh wood and take off whatever remainder of bark that I had on there. Next thing I want to do is I want to sand the bottom. So I left just saw marks and everything on the bottom. It's kind of rough and it may not even be quite level on the bottom. So yeah, I want to sand it. And I will simply use some 120 sandpaper to work the shrink pot down right on my bench top here. It's a nice flat surface. After that, a coat of oil and it's finished. Let's talk about this shrink pot. What do we do with these things anyway? It's just a little container. Well, we could leave it like this and I'll show you a few examples of some others that I have. Here's a little shrink pot that I have, no lid on it. We can put a lid on. That's gonna be a topic for another video. Let's talk about where, how we can use these. Some of the short ones, they're just small containers. They can hold paper clips on a desk, something like that, or if you make some longer shrink pots, like I have here, I made a couple that hold my spoons, some of my wooden spoons, and the chopsticks that we use every night for dinner. But you can, of course, put a lid on a shrink pot, and here's one that I made that has a little lid. Lid was hand-carved, little tulip tree shrink pot, hand-carved lid with a little lathe work that I put on top as a handle, okay? A couple options that you can do. I finish these shrink pots usually with tongue oil or boiled linseed oil on the outside. If I'm going to make a shrink pot with a lid, I'm not going to oil the inside because the oil will have a smell over time. I like to leave the inside just wood when I'm putting a lid on. Or, of course, I could put something like polyurethane. I don't like that. I'd rather have just the raw wood on the inside. That's my personal preference. If I'm making a shrink pot that doesn't have a lid, then I will oil the whole thing and let it dry and harden. It's a good protective coat on the shrink pot. It was a process creating this shrink pot. As you could see, many steps along the way, just for this little tiny thing, but it makes a great gift. People love a handmade gift such as this, and it is useful, can hold paper clips or what have you, anything that sits around on a desk gives it a little container. I'm not going to finish this one quite yet because before I put the coat of oil on, I want to create a lid for this shrink pot. And that's going to be the topic for another video. So I'll see you next time.